today's topic is, and um, what the theme of Parkinson Power is, is to give you all the tips, the tools, the strategies to live well with Parkinson's disease. The key is the word what? Well, well, well. well I didn't say exist, I didn't say survive. I said live well every day with Parkinson's disease. How many of you find it a little bit of a challenge to live well every single day with Parkinson's disease? And why might that be? Just for the normal up and down. The normal up and downs, the highs and the lows, the ons and offs, is that what you're talking about, Richard? Yeah, yeah it's a constant, uh, we can call it the Parkinson roller coaster. You know, those things. I used to ride them when I was a kid, and I think I gave it up when I was about 25, thinking this was ridiculous, you know? Screaming and all that kind of stuff. But this is really what Parkinson's disease is. It's the on and the off periods, both physically and mentally. How many of you are experiencing that? And it makes it hard when you wake up in the morning and you have a real plan for the day and you have a heart full of a mind full of good intentions of all the things that you're going to do that day, and then all of a sudden um, your your body decides not to um, uh, what's the word um, uh, cooperate, right? And it happens, and it's very discouraging. The on and off periods. Who knows what that means? Yeah, yeah. When you're on, your meds are doing well, and you're functioning really as well as we as well as we can hope for. And then sometimes the meds wear off before it's time for the next uh, dose, so you can actually go off like we turn the light switch on and off. Right? And that's very discouraging, isn't it? All right, that's very discouraging when you're doing fine, and all of a sudden you get off, go off, and you can't get out of the chair, or you can't get into the car, or you can't get yourself dressed. So it's a huge challenge, the highs and the lows, physically. And the other thing, too, with Parkinson's, even if you're doing well, you take the same medication, there are days that you do better than other days. Have you noticed that? Oh, so there's days that you can get up, you know, say, take the same dose of medication at the same time of day, and it just doesn't seem to Kickstarter is do as well as other days, and it's really a difficult thing to face. Um, the uncertainty of how, how am I going to do today? Uh, when might I go off? You know, am I going to be able to do everything that I have planned um, for this day? What else? What else is the challenging for you? Carol, do you have something? Okay. What else makes it a challenge? Pete? Uh, depression. That depression. Anybody feel a little blue, a little sad? Okay. Uh, depression is, um, for many, many Parkinson patients, normal. Um, it is part of the disease um, pattern. Uh, and you, you really have to fight depression. We can talk a little bit about depression. Uh, what is it? I think Dr. Juan is going to speak on it uh, tomorrow, if I'm correct. I think Dr. Uh, Juan Sanchez Ramos is going to talk about apathy, <coughs> depression, obsessive compulsive. Okay, so if you, am I wrong? Is that next week? Is that when is that, Dusty? Dusty's the only one that knows what I'm doing. Huh? Cognition. Cognition. So tomorrow is cognition, yeah. and next month is who knows? All right. So then I'm going to talk about depression. See how easy? <laughs> what is depression? You know, I keep saying to you, I want you to live well. And you only live well, what? When you're feeling positive, you're feeling motivated, you're feeling under control, you're fe feeling hopeful. Am I right? Um, you don't live well if you're unhappy and if you're sad and if you're depressed and if you're discouraged. So the goal for Parkinson's disease is to keep yourself on a positive note. And it's a constant, everyday effort for you because there's nothing pretty and there's nothing positive about Parkinson's disease. It's my, it's my new tagline. It ain't pretty, it's not positive, and it's not perky. It's hard, okay? So you have to fight the signs of depression, and it can creep in very slowly, or it can really kind of take you down. What is depression, friends? And you have to realize this, because depression, even for seniors, um, and we're all seniors with the exception of maybe two of you in here. 
don't have to listen to me. I've, I've lowered the age of a senior to 45. Uh -huh. <laughs> Every year I have a birthday, I bring it down another one, you know? So even, uh, even for those folks that are not dealing with depression, or that are not dealing with Parkinson's disease, depression is an epidemic among seniors. Did you know this? All right, now there's a difference between depression and sadness. Am I right? Yes. Yes. What is sadness? What, what, what does it mean to be sad? The blues. You have the blues, but best case scenario is you have a reason to be sad. You have a reason to be sad. You can identify, Mar I am sad because my dog that was my best friend for 16 years went to sleep last night. That's or I lost my best friend or I lost my spouse or I lost my mother, all right? It's the grieving that's triggered from an, an event that happens in your life. People can become very sad uh, when the time comes that they can't maintain their big home, all right? And they realize I can't take care of it anymore. I have to get out of my home and get into a smaller exclusive living style, right? This is a trigger that causes sadness, it's grief. You have a reason for it, you work yourself through it. Now, adult clinical depression is different than that. This is a chemical imbalance in the brain, and it's usually qualified by a physician where you have a period of two to three weeks, did you hear me? Yeah. Of a low blue mood. You're down here, mentally and emotionally, all right? And you can't seem to kickstart start yourself out of it. Have you felt it? Have any of you felt depression? You don't have to answer me if you don't want to, okay? What are the signs and symptoms of depression? Because depression, and we don't want that for you if I want you engaged in life and living well with Parkinson's. And there are red flag signs. Now depression usually is triggered by what? Think. Stress. Lack of control. Loss of control, stress. Stress opens the door for depression. It's why I push so hard on stress management that we're going to talk about today <coughs> because you're both living with unhealthy levels of stress. <coughs> right? Okay. And Ms. Pat said the loss of control as well. So there are red flag symptoms of depression. How do you know if you're depressed? First of all, how, how many of you know when you're feeling normal? Whatever that word might mean to you. Energy. You have, a lot you have energy, right? Positive you have a positive attitude, you're motivated, you're feeling happy, you're feeling a sense of peace and balance, which is your wellness package, okay? You have to understand what's normal for you. And the minute those feelings start changing or declining or lowering, it's a red flag that you need to pay attention. I think there's something going on with me. I'm, I'm feeling depressed. But what are the benchmark signs and symptoms of depression? Number one is what? That's in there. What's the number one? Isolation. Uh, yeah, isolation. When you stop wanting to get up and get dressed and come out and engage in the real world, because it takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of action plan to motivate yourself out of bed, to get dressed, to get in the car, and it takes a great deal of energy and positive power to communicate and engage in life and other people. Did you know that? That's why people that are depressed are what I call in bed in a ball. You know, don't talk to me, I don't want to get dressed. I want to stay in my flannel jammies, my gray shabby bathrobe. Here I come around again, girls. How many of you have a gray shabby bathrobe? If you do, donate it today. <laughs> so if all of a sudden you say, I don't want to go, I don't want to do it. I don't want to play cards with the girls. I don't want to have lunch with our friends anymore. I don't want to go to church or temple. I'm not going. That's a red flag because you're losing the motivation and the drive and the empowerment to get up and get out. It's easier.
to be belly up in the recliner with the clicker, right? You know, lock yourself in the closet with a candy bar. It's just perfect. You don't have to get dressed. You don't have to talk. You don't have to be nice. You don't have to do anything. But it's not part of the wellness package. So isolation, you have to pay real careful attention, both patients and caregivers. I think it's why it's so good with Parkinson places. You have a fun thing to look forward to, and you have your friendships, and you have fun things to do. So with regards to, I, it's an, my antidepressive gimmick, you know, you have no excuse with me now, you know, to stay home by yourself, because isolation's not good for you. What else? Who said sleep disorders? Sleep problems is huge with depression, all right? You're either sleeping too much, you know, when you're sad, because when you're asleep, you don't have to deal with reality, do you? Sometimes when I'm worried, I'm like, please, Marilyn, go to sleep, you know? because it frees me up from that. You're either you're sleeping too much or you're not sleeping at all. You notice when people are really depressed, upset, and worried, they can't settle. Well, sleep disorders is big with Parkinson's disease anyway. Am I right with that? Right. Okay, so you have to be able to get yourself into more of a peaceful, positive mode so that you can get into a good sleep hygiene cycle and you caregivers particularly. You have got to get your rest. You, have, you cannot do what you're doing without resting. So be careful with the sleep disorders. What else? Appetite. Eating disorders. Yeah. You're either not going to eat anything or you're going to eat like a feeding frenzy. You know, I've seen people eat anything that's not nailed down. I don't know where they're putting it. You know, I'm like, you know, where's it going? All right? You don't want either one of this. You have to have a healthy, balanced diet that I'm going to teach you today, both patients and caregivers, so that you have the energy and the wellness and the ability to stay healthy for both patients and caregivers. So neither one of these things are good for you. Uh, what else? Frustration. Yeah, well, frustration is a trigger for depression. You have to watch it, you see, because depression is not going to heal itself. If you're having these signs and symptoms, and you know you're having them, all right, you start walking around very sad. Sometimes with my Parkinson patients, it's hard to tell when they're depressed because their face isn't as light and bright as it would be even if they were happy, happy, right? So you have to really pay attention to this. You have to take this to your physician. And when you call a physician, when you call the doctor's office, who do I want you to speak with? The nurse. The nurse. Don't talk to anybody else but the nurse. And you say, you know what? I am feeling depressed. Um, I've been down for two weeks. I need to see the doctor. All right? There are very safe antidepressants that are non-habit-forming, non-addictive, okay, that you can go on to help you to come up like this. It's not going to go away. And depression, if you let it go long enough, has a very, very pathetic outcome. Am I right? I don't even like to talk about it that you've got to stop it. And you need to tell somebody. You know, if you're feeling depressed, you need to reach out and say, I can't get out of this because it's very scary to know in your mind you want to feel better, but you can't. And that's kind of the thing with depression. You can't talk yourself out of it. You can't distract it. You need to have counseling. You need to have possible medication. And you need to have a recovery plan for that. Because you can't be happy and healthy and living well, either patient or caregiver, if you're depressed. Okay. Pete? Well, I don't know where to start with this, but depression is so real. You, some people say, well, just go out, have a good time, you'll get over it. Go on a vacation, go <laughs> out to dinner. It doesn't work that way. Even people who have tons of money, for example, Robin Williams, killed himself because of depression. Yeah. It was not the blues, it was not the no. lack of money. He had everything in the world. And, and it's a him. clinical thing, and it goes with you. You know, going to a funny movie or taking a cruise, right? Right. Or treating yourself to a sports car. It's not going to change this. It's inside of you, and it needs to be treated. Yeah, Robin was a very <coughs> sad thing, and on the outside he was so happy and so gifted and so brilliant, you know, but I guess maybe it was just a curtain that he put up to keep himself, and, and a lot of the people in the 
Parkinson Arena, the Parkinson's disease didn't have anything to do with it. You know, we got some bad press on that one, but it, he was sick a very long time for that. And then it's a struggle and it's a sadness, you know, that you can't find joy and happiness if you're depressed. There is treatment available, so I want you to go on and get it, please. Dr. Domingo, for the members here and the people in my life, he's right here, does a great job with folks dealing with depression, anxiety, disorders, all right? Okay, so now what we're going to talk about today is, you know, um, lifestyle changes <coughs> that you need to make to live well. I mean, how many of you can say to me, Marilyn, I'm doing the wellness package. What's the wellness package? Activity. Look at a wellness package, and this is important <laughs> for seniors. This is important for people of any age, all right? right? It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle change, but you have to adjust your attitude um, to embrace the lifestyle change. So I always say to people, and they say when you try to motivate somebody or encourage people to make a change, you have to help them to understand why. So why do you think it's necessary for you to live a, a healthy lifestyle? Why? What do you, wh why is it so important? You have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself because you matter, right? They always say you can't get somebody to make a change or do something unless you can help them to understand what's in it for me. What's in it for you to do your best every single day with a series of choices to be good to yourself because you matter and you are important. What is more important than your life? Hello out there in chocolate chip cookie land. Huh? One of these days I'm going to pull those cookies. I can't, though, because I love you. And your favorite thing in the world, I did a survey. Chocolate chip cookies. What is more important to you? What is more precious than your life? All right? And you've got to take care of it. You have got to take care of it. Because what is the aging process? Wear and tear. That's all it is. Wear and tear. We're getting older. And the older that you get, the more you need to care for yourself. And you make it a lifestyle today. And you do it on a positive note. You do it because I'm going to do it for me because I matter and I want to feel good so I can enjoy this day. I want to be as strong as I can be so that I can face my challenges, right? Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. So what's in it for you? Think about it. So what's the whole big package? Quality of life. Huh? Quality of life. Quality of life. It's everything. What is quality of life? You know, is, is quality of life um, free of disease? Is quality of life no worries, no challenges? Is quality of life the ability to physically, mentally, and financially to do everything that you have a whim to do? Is that quality of life? No. You know, just like Pete said, there are people that have any, everything and anything. The resources do everything. Do they have quality of life? No, it's in the gutter. The quality of life that you want is just the ability to do the things you love to do with the people that you love to do them with. That's my simplistic quality of life. I have the ability to get up and get out and to make choices of what I want to do the best of my ability today and who I want to do it with, right? That's my choice. That is wellness, it's very simply put. Now, if you're, you're not going to have wellness if you don't feel good. If you don't feel good. The two things that you can do for yourself, the two things that have the greatest impact on your wellness, you control. And this is all about control. Everybody says with disease, with dis disability, with the aging process, I'm losing control. I'm losing control of my mind, I'm losing control of my body, I'm losing control of what I want to do. Am I right? Loss of control. I have Parkinson's disease. The first feeling that you feel, whether you know it consciously or not, is loss of control. Subconsciously, you're thinking, what's going to happen to me? What, what will tomorrow bring, right? What's coming? What's coming that I don't know about? I can't control what's coming. I can't control this disease, but I can control my choices and how I choose to respond to it. The only time that you have a sense of control is what? If you have a... Uh, 
positive You think that that's the answer to every question I ask, don't you? Usually it is, but not this one. If you scream out positive attitude, it's usually right when, when I'm up here on this perch, all right? You have a sense of control if you have a choice. You have a choice, okay? That's all it is. Your life is nothing more than a series of choices. Did you know that? My late mother told me that. She said, that's all it is. So life is just a series of choices. You are today where your choices yesterday and this morning got you, right? All right. The two things that have the greatest impact to wellness for a senior or someone, a senior caregiver or a Parkinson patient, you control. What are they? Right. You need to talk to them. What? You need to talk to them. To hold money. The person. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. You need to say engaged and talking to people. That's exactly correct, Carol. But the two things that you can take control over is how much you move and what you put in your mouth. You have a direct control over those two things. Do you, how, how does the... Um, how does the Snicker bar get from that table into my mouth? The Snicker fairy. The Snicker fairy. Do you know that cake that y'all gave me last Tuesday? Yeah. Did you see how big it was? No, it disappeared too quick. I probably ate the equivalent, and it was my excuse to celebrate my Saturday birthday. I probably ate 20 pieces of cake, and you know what? I enjoyed every bite because I deserved it. And I'm only going to do it once every 70 years, okay? But boy, it was fun. I ate that cake over four days. But you control the hand that feeds you, all right? What you put in your mouth matters. And you have the choice, you have the choice, do I eat broiled fish or a 20 ounce steak? Now stay with me team. <laughs> right? You have the control of what's in it for me, what I put in my mouth matters. Just the same thing as how much you move. You know, my Parkinson patients, the only way I'm going to keep you healthy and moving is if I keep you moving, right? With your exercise classes at Parkinson Place, with your physical therapy. You with me so far? You can choose to get in the recliner or stay in the bed, and you're going to decline faster than anything else. But if you make the choice, I'm going to get up, I'm going to do four exercise classes a week, I'm going to walk around my home, I'm going to get in my pool and do aquatic therapy, is that what's in it for me? Is that keeping you better? Yes. Is that a choice? I choose. I choose to eat right. I choose to exercise and move as much as I can. And I can't make decisions. What, well, Don? You can't? No. In other words, do I sit in this chair or do I sit in that one? You know, I've made decisions all my life. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I can't make a decision. So, how do, do I you sit inside or do I go outside to sit? And I'm like, why, why am I concerned about this? Just do it. Mm -hmm. So you have, you have um, trouble deciding should I sit in the house or should I sit on the terrace or something well, like we that? Have help. That's you, have, you have trouble making the final call? Yeah. Well, that's all right. I mean, you know, you can sit wherever you want to do whatever you want. And I think that it's important that you don't let little, you know, it's a big thing to you, but don't, don't let it upset you. Don't let, say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to sit here for a while and then I'm going to go sit on the patio for a while. And don't let the things in life that, that really struggle you and disturb you as a Parkinson patient um, upset you to the point of serious upset. And just like, forgive me, Steve? Yes. Steve. And just like Steve said, I've been making, I've been making decisions my whole life. This is the other thing about with Parkinson's disease that triggers the negativity and triggers the depression. The things that you've been able to do your whole life, whether it's a decision or a task, all right, or the things that you want to do, and when you lose um, the ability to do that, or it's more difficult to get to, to do that, it's an ongoing loss for you, all right? Sadness, depression comes from loss. 
there's not a bigger ongoing loss than Parkinson's disease. Am I right? What have you lost? What have you lost? Your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. You lost your lifestyle as you knew it, as you had it, and as you think it should be. You know, that's the other thing. How many of you can say, Mar, I'm exactly the day where I thought I was going to be 20 years ago? Right? How many did you plan on this? How many of you said, I have Parkinson's disease? Isn't that terrific? Or how many of you said, I pick me, pick me, I want to be a caregiver? Doesn't happen. You're stuck with something you don't want. There's nothing you can do about it. So you have to redefine your life as it is today. Is that easy? <coughs> Tell me about your lifestyle. What is your lifestyle with Parkinson's disease? What is your lifestyle with Parkinson's disease? Huh? It's what you make it. It's what you make it. There's my philosophy <coughs> comment. It's what you make it. It's a simple comment, but it's the truth, friends. You know, life is what you make it. You have the choice. You have the choice of being positive or being negative, all right? You have the choice of being happy or sad. You have the choice of being apathetic and lazy or being empowered and motivated and pushing yourself to get out. It's very hard to become out, it's very easy to become apathetic with Parkinson's disease. Why do you think that is? Yeah, you can be very apathetic because of a couple different reasons. It's very, isn't it great to keep yourself supercharged by the ability to be impulsive? You know, oh, oh my gosh, I just read in the paper there's a sale at Macy's, I'm going. But a bang, but a bob, takes me about 30 seconds. You know, baseball cap, glasses, earrings, in the car, I'm there. But Parkinson patients don't have that luxury. I never do that. That was a story I'm telling you. I don't care what the sales are. Amazing. I truth be told, I hate to shop. I get so upset when people are standing in line and pushing and shoving me and taking what I want. I just don't do it. I do everything online because I... Okay, but you lose the impulsivity of, I want to do it. I'm going to do it in a hurry. But look at the logistics of it. The Parkinson patient, it's a great effort. It's a great time consumption to get dressed. Am I right? Yep. It takes them a long time to, to, to put on the clothing and tie the shoes and button the buttons and do the morning care. It takes them a long time, you know, to, to ambulate. You know, I had, a, I had a patient once, I kid you not, took her 20 minutes to get from the bedroom to the front door. She used to call me, or she, I used to say, I used to have to call her and say, I'm coming. I'm leaving the house now. And 20 minutes, she would, she would get, start walking. So she could open the front door for me. I'll never forget 20 minutes, and it wasn't as far as from there to that door. All right? So, and then you have to wait for a driver many times, right? right. I want to do it. The sun's shining, I want to hit a bucket of balls, or I want to, I, want to, I want to go this, I want to go that, I want to go to the deli, I want to do this. And then you have to wait for your driver. I know you want to do it, honey, but I don't feel like doing it. What happens to the impulsivity? What happens to the motivation? Okay? So it's easier than going over all these hurdles to say, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to flop. You have to be careful with this because apathy leads to depression, leads to loss of a positive lifestyle. So how do you overcome that? How do you overcome that? Come on, talk to me. You fight it mentally. What, Don? You fight it mentally. You fight it mentally. You fight it mentally. Always set goals that are achievable that set you up for success and always to do a, a plan. So you can't deal with impulsivity quite as much, and that's okay. A lot of seniors can't. But you can say, okay, it's Monday. Um, tomorrow is Tuesday. This is our plan for Tuesday, right? right? And everybody gets on the same page. We're going to get up at 8.30. We're going to have our breakfast. We're going to get in the car at a certain time, and we're going to come, and we're going to have a wonderful day at Parkinson Place. Yep. The end result is the same. You're up, you're out, you're engaged, you're active. 
you see, as opposed to isolation, staying home, and getting apathetic and depressed. So that calendar that I created for you is a little path to get you through Monday through Friday. Do you understand me? Pre-plan the things that you want to do, but don't be overwhelmed if for whatever reason you can't do it. That you wake up and you say, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just having an off day. I'm just tired. I can't do it. That's okay. You can take what I call a mental health day. You can take a day to be by yourself. We all need it, don't we? I know I do. I enjoy Saturday afternoon, me and my geraniums. I talk to the geraniums. They talk back. But nobody's... I don't have to talk to them if I don't want to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? So it's okay because you're dealing with such huge demands on you physically and mentally with Parkinson's disease that you can take a day off. You caregivers can say, you know what, I'm really put down here. Let's just stay home and chill. Or you Parkinson patients say, you know what, I'm pushing hard, I've been doing my best, and I just need a day to myself. That's okay. One day, two days tops, do not make it a lifestyle. No more than two days. You with me with that? You can have what I call a mental health day or two. We all need it. But do not make it a lifestyle. And on day three, up, dressed, out, and let's go. Because the longer you decline, the longer you sit. It's just like sliding down the hall. It's easier not to get in the hole. It's easier to stay out of the hole if you don't get in the hole. But the deeper you slide down the hole, what? The harder, the more time, energy, motivation, heartbreak, struggle it is to get back up out of that dark hole. So don't go down. The minute you start yourself floundering or feeling low or blue, you tell somebody and you adjust your thinking. I always encourage you to, to set, your, set your disposition because you choose to be happy, you have to set your disposition. You can wake up in the morning feeling negative, right? I talk to you about this all the time. You, you, you start the day, you're feeling negative, you're feeling lazy, you're feeling entitled. Alright. So no matter how thin it is, you can flip it over. So if you wake up stressed, depressed, out of control, negative, discouraged, you can flip it. Can you not? Consciously flip it and do your positive affirmations and do your mindset, even if it's raining out. This is a great day. I had this day. I'm going to choose to enjoy this day to the best of my ability because you only get one of them. Have you noticed? So you wake up in the morning and you set your mind, I will try, I will be positive, I will do my best, I will stay on my wellness guidelines, I will support a good relationship positivity with my partner, my loved one, my caregiver. I will, but no excuses. Because nobody can set your mindset other than you. And me, if I shake you enough. <laughs> Carol. You look forward to the next day, or the, or the same day. You look forward to the people that you see <coughs> many times, and you're happy to see them, and they're happy to see you. Right. This place does a lot for us. Yeah, it's good. Our, our favorite words is look forward. It's great to look forward to seeing people that you know and love. It's great to look forward to a nurturing place where you can come and be yourself. It's good to look forward to fun and sociability, right? Because this disease tries to stop you. Have you noticed that? Yep. You slow down enough, you're going to stop. You can't stop. You have to look forward in your mind. You have to look forward. You have to move forward with your body. That's why you have to work so hard with it. Please realize that this is a progressive disease. It's what's so discouraging about it. It's continuing to, to progress. It's what's so elusive about it. So if you can say, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing the same today as I was last week, are you gaining on it? Yeah. You better believe it. Status quo with this is great. Mm -hmm. Holding on, maintain it. Maintaining your mental cognition, maintaining your positive thinking, maintaining your physical function, all right, is great because the disease is taking off ahead of you when you're holding it. Do you understand my theory with that? 
But if you sit down and say, oh, woe is me, I give up. Don't give up. Okay, Carol, don't give up. You heard her. She's very talkative today. That's good. What do they say? It's not average of the fat lady sings. What does that mean? What's that? It's an old saying. What does it mean? Well, who's the fat lady? Who is she? Somebody in an opera. Somebody? It came from an opera? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. opera. No, it was Kate. Smith singing God Bless America. Oh, you remember that? Yeah. Was she fabulous? And boy, when she sang the national, she sang the national anthem once, twice, or once. Yeah. Remember Kate Smith? Yeah. So, okay, so now I know what it means. So it's never over, okay? You gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep trying. But it's a conscious effort. You know, you have to live life on a conscious level. What does that mean? It takes more to be alive. It takes more than a pulse to be alive. I haven't said that statement for a long time. Yeah. It takes more than a pulse to be alive. What do I mean by that? You gotta contribute to it too. You're alive, you're breathing, your heart's going. Are you alive? No. You're existing. You're existing. Right? But are you alive? You're not living. Who said that? You're not living. Good girl. All right. All right? You have to live with a passion. You have to live with an enthusiasm. And only that comes from you. I hate the word victim. You know, you're not a victim. You're a survivor. You're a winner. You know, I hate that word victim used in any level of health care. Victims are knocked down and hurt and killed, right? right? Survivors standing up, doing the best that they can. You're not necessarily perfect. You're not necessarily as great as you think you should be. But you're still terrific. So I always say take what you've got and really maximize your potential. And don't worry so much about what you've lost. Don't focus on that. You understand what I'm saying? Focus on who am I today? What can I do today? You pull up the joy and the th enthusiasm. The greatest thing in life is enthusiasm. Did you know that? Take you anywhere you want to go. <coughs> be enthusiastic. Don't be a deadbeat. You know? Because it's contagious and it'll help you. It'll help your loved one. You know, if you want to motivate, you know, in nursing, I was always rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, you know, let's go up, up, out of the bed, da, 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 and they would do it, because I was like cheerleading, you know. But it takes a lot of energy for that motivation and the passion for life, okay? Please be grateful for what you have. How many of you can say, my, I'm really grateful for this day? Always make a list of all the great things that you have in your life. What are they? Your spouse, did you hear that? He said his spouse. Okay, so you have to make up your mind, I'm gonna live well and I'm going to embrace a healthy lifestyle. And I'm gonna, con I'm gonna start by controlling the hand that feeds you, okay? If you don't put gas in the car, if you don't have gas in the car, is the car going to move? No. If you open the, the gas cap and put in, you know, rotten eggs and rotten tomatoes and coffee sots, is it going to work? Why would you not do that? You want to park on a hill. <laughs> Why would you not do that to your car? Answer me. You'll ruin it. I taught a class for Sarasota Middle School about a thousand years ago, and I was trying to get kids to understand why they need to eat better. And I used the thing of if I gave you a red Porsche, you know, would you put all this stuff in there? No, I never do that mistake. I never do it. I never do it. You know, because why? Because I'd hurt my car. I don't hurt my car. It's the same thing with your body, right? You put it in. <coughs> And once it get past your tongue, you don't know you ate it. Have you noticed that? I figured that out. So my thing is, if it's no good for you, keep it off your tongue. All right? So you pick up the food source, 
and you say, you know, what's in it for me? I'm going right back around again to, if I can't show you what's in it for me, I'm not going to get you to do it. All right? So I always take the American Cancer Society guidelines for healthy nutrition. All right? First one being avoid obesity. What happens with, um, and I'm talking morbid obesity, it sets you up for all the different diseases, right? Right. So you want to maintain a normal, healthy weight. And you do that by healthy choices and by exercising, no two other ways. All right? So what do I want to see with your diet? And these are only, if you're on a specialized diet, you don't need to listen to this part. If you're on a cardiac diet or a kidney diet or anything like renal, renal diet or anything, don't listen to me. Or if you um, have a stomach tube, don't listen to me. All right, but what do I want to see in your diet and what do I will not want to see in your diet? Minimize the fats, all right? Minimize the fats, the bad fats, my favorite fats. <laughs> and you all know what they are, all right? Control your cholesterol. What's the number one source of cholesterol? Here you go. Red meat. Bottom line, if it has a face and four legs, don't eat it. All right? I'm not saying you can never have a steak, but cut the fat off and only have it once in a while. Your choice, the 20-ounce steak or the broiled fish, what's in it for me? You're full at the end of the menu, right? right? Lots of vitamin A and vitamin C. Where's your vitamin C? You are in the state of Florida. Isn't it wonderful? Citrus everywhere around us. Eat it. Where's your vitamin A coming from? <coughs> Two, two colors that you have to remember. Bright orange and bright green, right? So if you look at a fruit and a vegetable and it's bright yellow, bright orange, bright green, it's vitamin A, eat it. High fiber, have you noticed with um, Parkinson's disease, sometimes um, you have some issues with constipation. But constipation happens with Parkinson patients, why? Muscle. Yeah, because number one, you're not moving as much. You know, if your exercise is moving around and you're active, you tend to have a more normal bowel activity. And the other thing too is, what gets the food from your mouth all the way through is what this muscle that's bringing it through the whole GI tract, and that can slow down at all as well. And then you're taking all these medications, yeah. right? Half of them say will cause constipation. Huh? Half of them say well, they're all constipation. Anything you put in that's not, I don't know. So constipation is a big problem. We don't want it for you because, you know, you want to be regular to feel better, okay? So high fiber. What fiber am I talking about? Can you get through there? Is it okay to get through? Fruits and vegetables. High fiber. Where do you get it? Whole grains. If it's not whole grain, don't eat it. There's nothing in it. If it's not whole wheat, whole grain, don't eat it. There is nothing in it. It's refined. So you can say to yourself, do I eat the whole wheat bagel or the chocolate chip? Where's your choice? I'm going to take this one. Do I need to eat the whole bran muffin? with a little bit of marmalade and jam or honey, or do I eat the, um, what's another one? Donut. Okay. You want to consume as much, the cereal, look at your cereals. Do I eat the, I don't know, I'm not a big cereal eater. What's a high fiber cereal, help me? Huh? Do I eat all bran or do I eat Cocoa Puffs? You see the balance? So you're going to eat it, you're going to consume, but you're going to do what's best for you. Now remember when you do high fiber, you have to do what? Lots of what? Water. 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 You have to do it. Right? I want you sipping on water all the time without the scotch. <laughs> Got me? Yep. Pure water is so good for you. And try to get in eight good glasses a day 
because it's going to hydrate you, it's going to flush you, it's going to flush your kidneys, it's going to help with the constipation, okay? Uh, it's going to keep you nice and hydrated. Now be careful with your water consumption because I don't want you, if I say to you, try to get in eight nice uh, glasses of water a day, then two things, if you don't have a real good appetite, I encourage you not to drink fluids when you eat. You hear me? Your tummy only can get so big. If it's full of water, you're not going to be able to get in your, you know, your fish and your vegetables and your salads. So hold that, right? And then don't consume any water, I would say, after, depending on when your bedtime is, you know, maybe after 6 o'clock at night. Because what happens when you have a lot of water? And then you, you, most seniors have to get up at least minimum of one time a night right, to, to go to the restroom. And this is your peak time for what? Falls, okay, for falls, and it also affects your sleep cycle. So I always say to people, keep your bottled water with you, uh, keep it at home where you go all the time and just keep sipping on it, all right? I'm not talking about iced tea, I'm not talking about coffee. I'd be all set if the criteria was coffee. Yeah. It's not, why, because these are what? Diuretics. These are diuretics and these are pulling fluid from your soft tissue, okay. causing you to urinate more. They're dehydrating you, not hydrating you. A cake, a nice fresh clear um, broths and juices. Pick the good stuff. Watch your sugar. Bonnie says refined sugar is no good for you. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, the worst thing. So you want healthy carbohydrates like what? Fruits and vegetables, pastas, whole grain <laughs> rices. Watch your protein. Right? You all know the rules with your protein consumption with your cinnamon. You all know that? Protein, cinnamon. You're all clear with that? Anybody no. not? No. No. Um, uh, cinnamon um, uh, is an amino acid and it's protein. Protein based. It's simulated in the body like a protein. And the truth be told, when, when you take cinnamon, a very small percent of it um, is actually absorbed you know, through the intestine, and a very small amount of it crosses the blood-brain barrier. So you have to understand, if you have a huge consumption of protein, you know, like if you get up in the morning and have bacon and eggs and um, che or cheese omelets, milk, all that kind of stuff, cream cheese, things like that, that's a lot of protein. So if you have that the same time you're consuming your cinnamon, you're going to even minimize less, if any, of the, of the absorption of your cinnamon. Do you understand that? So you want to give yourself a one half hour window before and after. You can wake up in the morning, because I know you need that first dose. Those of you that take cinnamon, you rely on that first dose to really get you up and started, and that's important. And many times you do need to take something. You have to have breakfast to break the fast and to get your metabolism going. So if you get up and you need to dose the cinnamon early, consume foods that are protein free. <coughs> See what I'm saying? Toast and jam. For that 30 minutes, take your dose, wait 30 minutes, and then you can have whatever you want. It's just fighting to be absorbed and into, and into the bloodstream, and that's important for you. Okay? Okay, fruits, vegetables, be careful what you put on the foods. It's not so much what you eat or the other two, two things that matters is how you cook them and what you put on them. Am I right? Right. So I can see you can say, I can say to you, baked potato is wonderful for you. High potassium, it's good for you. It's a comfort food. It's great for people with swallowing problems. But then if you put the half a pound of butter and the sour cream and the the shredded cheese, and then what else can we stuff in the bacon bits? All that good stuff. What happens with baked potato? It now becomes something unhealthy for you. So really take a look at finding new ways to eat and to eat well. I recommend to seniors that you consume four to six smaller meals a day. You'll do better. You notice that? You'll do better if you always have something in your stomach. So if you have breakfast, if you have a morning snack, if you eat the primary big meal, the heavier meal at lunch, and then have a snack in the afternoon, and then a meal at night. You, you do better than consuming huge amounts 
you know, of food at one time. If you're like me, it just knocks me out and I don't feel that great. All right? But remember you are what you eat. Make healthy choices. Am I saying deny yourself what you love? Of course not. I don't think you should be not denied anything. Hmm. Right? Yeah. But in moderation. You want to have that little piece of cheesecake or those Connie cookies that she makes for me. That's, that's it. Everything in moderation. Okay? Any questions? Yeah, please be careful with your speech and swallowing. Uh, uh, your swallowing issues for many times. Uh, Parkinson patients do have the weakening in the muscles here and in the, in the throat with the tongue, with the ability to throw the food where it needs to be, and also with the ability to get it into the right track down here. So my patients, I want you to really pay attention if you're noticing any changes with the way it feels to swallow. You need to please tell someone immediately. You don't have to be coughing to be choking. Are you clear with me? You can be swallowing improperly into the wrong track, into the lung, without any symptoms showing. You understand what I'm saying? So if you say, oh, listen, it feels funny for me back here, or um, it's different than it used to be, then you need to take it to your neurologist and maybe have a swallowing study, okay? Realize that as you might have more difficulty handling foods and chewing foods because of the muscles in your jaw and everything, you might need to uh, prepare foods in different ways. You know, make sure it's cut small. Um, you know, use gravies and sauces and ways to eat the consumption of healthy foods. Do you understand that? You can puree. Okay. Questions about nutrition? Really pay attention to it. And if you don't bring it into the house, you're not going to eat it. So, you know, I would say if you, if you open up the refrigerator and there's nothing in there with, with Snickers and jelly donuts, what are you going to eat? Snickers and jelly donuts, right? But if you open the refrigerator and you have pasta salad and you have go-to foods, I'm a big advocate of buy it cut, buy, buy it chopped, you know, have it ready in a heartbeat. You caregivers are busy, take all the shortcuts, have the pasta salad made, have the fresh green salad made so that all you have to do is put on the dressing that you enjoy, right? Casseroles, one, one pot meals, healthy foods that you can go to when you're hungry, because lots of times Parkinson patients eat when you're hungry. You don't have to be on the clock, right? Right. Just eat, right? And exercise, get up and walk. Walking, anybody can walk. Walk with assistance, walk with safety. You know, the goal is to keep you ambulating. If you're falling, if you're stumbling, if you're freezing, you need to get you on a walker. It's your friend, it's your best friend. I, nothing upsets me more than I want to have to really fuss with somebody to get on a device that's going to keep them safe and keep them mobile. Be careful in your home. Be careful when you get up in the night that you have that walker if you're uh, stumbling or falling. You make sure that you have that walker at arm's length, not across the rim. I say, where's your walker? Oh, it's over there, Marilyn. Well, how are you going to get it? You see what I'm saying? Don't ambulate in the night or any time else um, that you're not feeling safe and secure on your feet because falls are the worst thing for you. Manage your stress. Big piece of your wellness package is managing stress. What's stressing you? Huh? Is life at large stressing you? Oh good, you're all just so happy and well balanced and doing great, probably doing better than me. <laughs> what is stress? Pressure. Stress is caused by three things. Do you know that? Difficulty. You don't stress when everything is easy. When, I, when you have to have a cakewalk, you don't stress, do you? Everything's just ducky. It's caused by difficulty. Go ahead and answer. Sure, of course. It's called by difficulty, pressure. You're pressured to do something. The heat's on. And strain. And strain comes by long term. You understand? You're, and you're doing long term. You're, you're running a marathon, not a sprint. You hear me? So you have to be able to manage the stressors in, the, in your life. You have to be able to identify 
I'm stressing. Now, a certain amount of stress is important. Why? A healthy level of stress is important. Why? Keeps you going. You'd be a blob without it. If you didn't have a healthy level of stress, I got to catch the plane on time, or does anybody remember that tomorrow is April the 15th? <laughs> Tax day. Tax day. I mailed mine yesterday. I'm way ahead of last year. <laughs> I like it that way. I put that little stress going on. I just, it's a game I play with myself. I just, yeah, I was in line too long, but by goodness, I sent it. Okay, so what was I talking about now? Stress. <laughs> Difficulty, pressure, and strain. Okay, realize when you're stressed and you want to have a sense of peace and balance. We want to keep your mind this way, just like we want to keep your body equal keel and doing well. Okay, so eat right, exercise, manage your stress, surround yourself with positive people. It's the key. You know, if you get what we call in Philadelphia sourpuss, somebody always negating putting you down, nothing's ever good enough, get rid of them, all right? You want people around you that are positive and perky and motivational and giving you the attaboys that are seeing life through positive eyes because it's contagious, all right? Make yourself the top priority, stay engaged in life, plot a plan and say these are the fun things we're going to do today and this week and do them, okay? Did that help you? Yes. Yeah. Create your own lifestyle starting today. Make it yours. Okay?